You just got your brand new Commodore 64 Ultimate configured exactly the way you like it. The screen set up the way you like it. Maybe you've got Jiffy DOS, maybe you've got Dolphin DOS, maybe you've got some cartridges inserted. But what happens if you want to explore and branch out and try other things, including making configuration changes to your C64 that might not work for other things? Config files are the way we're gonna tame that beast. We're gonna talk all about it next, so stick around. Let's go, let's go into the Bonner Road World. All right, so the Commodore 64 out of the box may not be exactly what you wanted, so you've made some changes. You've maybe changed yourself to NTSC video. Maybe you've set up some uh, SID parameters that you like. Maybe you've set up joysticks. Your Wi-Fi is all set up and working just right. You've got everything set up and that's great. But what happens if you need to make changes to accommodate some game or some demo or some workflow that you wanna do? So the way we're going to get away with doing that is we're going to be making config files. Now it's worth noting right out of the box, you can always go to the menu, hit F1, go down to configuration and reset to defaults. That will put everything back like it came from the factory. So if you've made some change and now the system won't boot any games or the drives won't work or something terrible happens, you can always get back by resetting to defaults. But maybe you wanna to reset to your defaults, not the ones that it's shipped with, but the ones that you have selected, right? So I've got all of the defaults the way I like it. So here's what you do. This is so simple, you're gonna wonder why you haven't been doing it all this time. Find one of your storage devices. I'm gonna just go to my USB drive, right? There's not much on here. I'm gonna hit F1 and go to configuration and save to file. It's just that simple. So I'm gonna call this Shane standard. Perfect. Now, no matter what happens, no matter what I monkey with, no matter what I change, I can always get back to Shane standards by just loading the settings and I'm right back in business. I can take as much risk as I want playing with configurations to get exactly what I need. So let's say, for example, you've got a game like, say, Skate or Die. Now I'm gonna run this. Now it says you wanna change your drive type to 1581. Well, that's one thing that's gonna change as soon as I run this game, right? So I'm gonna say yes. So now I've already, I just made a configuration change that's not part of my standard configuration. But this is going a little slow, right? Can I get some fast load in here? For Pete's sakes, so I'm gonna go and mount something that'll help me out, say, Oh, I don't know, an action replay cartridge. So I just made a configuration change, right? This may be something that I wanna change. All right, and then uh, I'm gonna go back here. I'm going to um, reset this guy. Oh, there's my action replay. Install fast load, please. Thank y'all. I'll remount that skate or die disc. I know there's shortcuts. I'm just doing it the long way. So this will make this go a lot quicker. But now I've made several configuration changes at this point. Now let's say that I've made these configuration changes and I get exactly what I want. I don't have any of my audio turned on, so you don't get to hear this cool intro on Skate or Die. So I've got a working configuration for Skate or Die, right? Maybe I went in and tweaked the digital uh, sound sample levels, all that stuff. But I do have a working configuration now it's time for us to save it. F1, configuration, save to file. We're gonna call it skate or die. Now I have a configuration ready to go. I can move back to Shane standard. I can go about my business, do my regular old thing, but when I'm ready to play skate or die, load the skate or die settings, all right, in I go. Now you'll notice though, of course, that the action replay cartridge didn't kick in because I didn't reset it all the way. There you go. Now we're ready to do it. Cartridges are a little stranger. It's because I didn't reset it all the way to get the cartridge to pop in, right? Now we're ready. We can mount the disc and I believe it's percent star. And now we're back in business. But anything that I'd set up, the sound chip or uh, anything like that would have been preserved with that config file. So there we go. And I now have a dedicated configuration file. Think of it like an INI file for an old Windows program, for those of you that that makes sense for. All right. 
back to Shane standard, right? So you can easily flip between modes. PAL with turbo, PAL with REU, PAL with turbo and REU, and TFS 50 using uh, 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 high gain on the digital samples on the SID chip. There's a million things you could do here. Jupiter Fracture is another great example, right? If I tried to run this right now, uh, 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 you don't have your system in PAL. Uh, 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 uh. Now, as soon as I move my system to PAL, my capture system is going to lose its mind. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to change myself to NTSC 5. Now, you don't have to have PAL. This is a little secret I'm going to tell on another video, but NTSC 50 will trick most PAL games into running in NTSC at 50 hertz. So this is what we're going to use. Right, so now I have the right video mode that I can now come back in and rerun this game. And we can double check. Now we got a running game. So now we have ourselves a configuration that works. Granted, these are very minor configuration tweaks, but I think you get the idea. Now I'm gonna make a configuration. I'm gonna save it to file and I'm gonna call it Jupyter. So now I have configuration files for my day-to-day -day operations which is gonna completely wig out if I change it. Um, you can see I've got, a, now I've got a config file for my Jupyter Fracture, a config file for Skate or Die, and it goes on and on. Now, you've gotta think bigger picture here, right? I make one video change or I make one little tiny change, but there's a lot of things that as you delve into this system, you're gonna find that, oh my God, I can change this, I can change this, I can change this. Pretty soon you've made so many changes, you don't even, you haven't even captured all of them. You don't even know what it was that you did. So that's where these config files really come into play. And what do these config files look like? Can you look at them? Are they something that's human friendly? Turns out that they are, and they look exactly like old style INI files from back in the early Windows days. So it's got some sort of a main section, so SID socket configuration, alt, uh, ulti SID configuration, SID addressing, uh, all these other things, right? All of these things are in here. This is a text file. You could literally take this text file, open it in Notepad, and make changes, providing you knew what you were doing. And um, you could just sit here and then make little tweaks and save it back, make new configs. So it's pretty neat. Uh, the config system is really, really simple, really easy to use. And the more you use it, and the more that you make these little checkpoints in your system, um, you'll find that it can be a great help. You'll find it's a great help to have this knowledge uh, under your belt. So listen, I hope this helped you out. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know what to do. Leave comments. A lot of video ideas I've got coming are from your comments. So please let me know how we're doing here. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shane Armonroe. Take care and we'll see you next time.